Hey everybody, I'm Lee with Old Sneak Wine, and I hope you're having a great day. Today, I want to show you something that we do. Uh, we're going to hot fit a bar shoe, but it also has a rocker in it. So I think it's important to have an even heat. A lot of times if your forge isn't hot, it'll have hot spots in it under the jets. So what I like to do is overheat it like that, then just set it on the anvil, and you can tell it's got a rocker in it right there. So I just set the rocker over. Now I'm going to go trim the foot. And hopefully my timing is correct, but I don't want it too hot, but I want it even. So first thing I do is this horse, we trim it. It's got a real wonky foot and a crooked leg. So, and you can see this medial heel is pushed up right here. So if you look down the foot, you can see that we lower it medially right here. So trying not to mess around so my shoe doesn't get too cold. I'm trimming this foot. And I have to remember I'm burning a rocker in, so your trim is very important. Trim is always important. Straightening the bars. See it's broken there, so need to make sure they do a good job there. So your trim on a rocker has to mirror the rocker. And you don't have to trim this. You could just burn it, but it'll make it less of a burn if you trim it in the way that you want it, meaning for the rocker right here. Need to lower it medially a little bit more. Now you can see these are starting to line up, but the x-rays are what make us do that. The joint spaces in the pastern indicate that. Okay, so look down the foot here. You can tell that we've trimmed it lower here. So we're just gonna top it real quick. That's what I'm looking for when I'm topping. I just want it straight, straight as strong. So you can see this is black right now. Hopefully that's enough heat. So you can see it's not burnt there, but it is the rest of the shoe. So the whole idea of this is to get good wall contact all the way around. There, that's a really good burn. And the whole idea of this, you burning a rocker on is so that where the rocker is, we can have breakover in that. You can tell that there's some breakover there. You can simply achieve that by just setting the shoe back as well. But then what happens is that the toe will fall apart. The heels will get sore. We've done it, see it all the time. Um, but this is one way to prevent that. Wall contact is one thing that's overlooked, but I believe it's really important. Me making the most mistakes as anybody over my career of doing that because pulling it back does work but then eventually the foot will fall apart and you don't have to this is a handmade shoe and you can tell 
that it's a little wonky. It's a little shorter medially here, but we put some extra in the toe so we could rocker it and still have the same surface area here, but that's the way the foot is. So you can tell how it looks right here. Now that the shoe's cold, fit is very important. We use Mustad's hoof cushion. It's really nice. Part of the, some of the biggest problems you'll run into on a horse with a problem like this is something gets under the pad and then they can't get it out. So this plugs it and then we put a hoof packing in here that will not set up and this plugs the back and gives us frog pressure. So it's win-win. We also make an aluminum plate to put underneath it as a pad. It cups it away from the sole as you can see here. And this is reset obviously. And then we grind the medial side down. We also forged it. I just touched it up with the grinder. So you can tell when you look at the back, it's thicker here than it is here. So this one has a lot going on. But I think the take home is that the basics should always be followed. And that's wall contact and fit. Need to set it down and watch the back half of the foot right here how it squirts out. And if you pick up the other foot, let them stand on it, it'll put all their weight and you can see the comfort mix that's coming out the bottom, the hoof cushion. I like to use the Mustad slider nails on this horse. This is a small foot and I don't want to be very invasive to the wall. Grant Moon's hoof gouge. It's really nice. It's different than a rasp because it makes just a little ice cream type scoop right here as you can see. So helps you have a stronger clinch but even without rasping it it doesn't hurt your fingers at all. And another thing you can notice is that I've got nice nails that are right above my old nails. That's very ideal. But over here I got into some old nail holes. I don't have a problem with that. It's not as nice of a nail line to say this would be very ideal. This is not, but I don't like to make as many holes. I don't like to make a lot of holes, I should say. That'll just keep the hook wall stronger. When you're shoeing in this manner, when you're not pulling the shoe back, you shouldn't have to do a lot of dressing to the hoof wall. It should just be a light cleanup like that. Aluminum pad, a little bit. But other than that, your kind of goal is a perimeter fit. And you come in with a sand block, make it look nice. hoof shield is just a sealant yes it makes it look pretty but also puts a light it also returns the sealant to control moisture better come look at the bottom Leah So one thing I want to talk about it, so this is a handmade and it's not perfect by any means, but it's a way 
for us to keep our skills in check and to make sure that we're growing. And I believe forging is important, so it's a way to push ourselves and then every time we see it and reset it, we can see the flaws and what we need to do better. We weld a lot in, and I think there's nothing wrong with that. I don't believe the horse knows the difference. But when you're forging and making them periodically, it makes you better. And if you can afford to do that in your business on every horse, good for you. But if you can't, just try working it in and uh, eventually keep doing more and more.